I haven't worn my Apple Watch Ultra for over a month now, and that's for one very big reason. Back in February, myself and my brother-in-law went to the Lake District and compared smartwatches. I had the Apple Watch Ultra on my wrist, as always, and he had a Garmin Forerunner 255. And as you might guess, the Garmin absolutely smashed the Apple Watch in terms of battery life. Now that should come as no surprise because they are very different smartwatches. The Apple Watch Ultra is basically an iPhone on your wrist really, whereas the Garmin is more of an activity focused, runner focused, watch with a bit of smart watch stuff thrown in for good measure. Despite that, whenever I do any kind of hiking test with the Apple Watch Ultra, all of you Garmin fans flood the comments and tell me straight away that what I should be doing is trying out a Garmin myself. And that's exactly what I've been doing over the last few weeks. On my wrist now is a Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro Solar and, well, it's taught me some valuable lessons about the Apple Watch. I'll explain more later, but first I want to give you a tour of the Phoenix 7 Pro Solar while I'm walking around London, which I'm doing with the GPS navigation and full tracking for hiking. So it's going to be an interesting day. The Phoenix 7 Pro comes in three sizes, 42 millimeters, 47 millimeters, and 51 millimeters. I've got the 47 millimeter version, which is, well, it feels the, roughly the same size as the Apple Watch Ultra on my wrist, which for me is absolutely fine. The price ranges from £749 in the UK to £929, and that places it squarely in Apple Watch Ultra territory. In fact, it's a little bit more expensive if you go for the top-end version. The spec list for the Phoenix 7 Pro is absolutely ridiculous. It's way too long for me to try and reel, or even bother reeling off in this video. Trust me though, if you want an action watch, action watch, an activity exercise watch that tracks every conceivable type of activity and can do so in pretty much any condition, it's for you. But the highlights reel is incredibly impressive. The display is made from sapphire and it is solar charged. And as you'd wish really, given what you'll be doing with this watch, it's scratch resistant. The case is made from fiber reinforced polymer, whatever that is, and the bezel and the rear cover are both made from steel. It's also been tested to military standards for shock, water and thermal resistance. So this thing really can take a beating. Now, I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I do think the Phoenix 7 Pro is a handsome looking watch. It's not a dress watch, obviously, but it's not meant to be. It's for people who do lots of long runs and go on adventures. The fact it's so ruggedly handsome is just a nice coincidence. If you charge the Phoenix 7 Pro up to full, you get 18 days of battery life. I've never seen that on a smartwatch before, it's almost comically long. But it gets even more daft because if you turn on the battery saving features you get 55 days. I took the Phoenix 7 Pro hiking in the Lake District recently and after a 13 kilometre walk through the hills of Coniston it lost four days of battery life, which would be worrying if it didn't have nine days still remaining. It's also worth bearing in mind that the watch had been on for three or four days before that trip, and I didn't need to recharge it until four days after the trip. Still the best city in the world. Fight me in the comments. But that sort of battery life is dreamland for an Apple Watch owner, even if you have the Ultra, and Garmin just understands. They know the kind of stamina these things need if you do serious stuff with them. And yes, with that sort of battery life, I was worried that I'd forget to charge it, but in reality, you don't, because you're still acutely aware that it's a smartwatch, and at some point, it needs charging. The difference with the Phoenix 7 Pro is that whenever you check the battery life, it's a nice surprise. That isn't always the case with the Apple Watch.
Now where things do fall down a little bit for the Phoenix 7 Pro is that although it is technically a smartwatch, it's not quite as capable in that regard as the Apple Watch. You get system notifications and messages on your wrist, but that's it. You don't get any of the Apple ecosystem benefits, obviously. You do get full integration, obviously, with the fantastic Garmin Connect app. But unless you keep diving into that, and to be honest, there's so many numbers and metrics and things in there that I don't understand. Unless you keep diving into that, the only connection between the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro and your iPhone is notifications. And that has left me missing some very important things. I can't use the Phoenix 7 Pro to unlock my Mac. And it has no idea about the 8,000 AirPods and headphones that I have connected to my Apple ID, which means you can't switch between headphones. It, it, it's, a, it's a problem, trust me. You can, in theory, use Garmin Pay to pay for stuff, but my brother-in-law informs me that it's not compatible with all UK banks. I haven't looked into that fully yet, but I just can't be bothered. So consequently, I miss Apple Pay big time. You can add music to this via the 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, but that means syncing, which feels a bit 2005 and iTunes. Whereas with the Apple Watch, if you've got the cellular version, you can go out with your watch, no phone, and connect it to your AirPods and run freely with any music you want. I do miss that as well. However, a lot of these comparisons aren't really fair because, as I mentioned earlier, the Phoenix 7 Pro is much more of a traditional watch than it is a smart watch. And all of the tactile buttons and the rugged look and feel really satisfy the 90s kid in me who is absolutely obsessed with early LCD watches. And yes, I wish the display was brighter, and yes, it's annoying that the Phoenix 7 Pro doesn't remind you to stop your workout, which means two hours later it thinks you're still on a run. But all these things are minor gripes, which dissipate the more you wear the Phoenix 7 Pro. One of the biggest things I've learned since I've had this Phoenix 7 Pro on my wrist is the fact that I don't rely on the Apple Watch as much as I thought I did. And I think that's for a few reasons. One of them is that I'm not, and never have been, an Apple Watch power user. I use it to track my runs, track my workouts. I even use it to track my sleep but I don't do anything with the data it produces. I don't use it to open my garage door. It's not built into my home automation system because I haven't got one. And there's not a single third party app on my Apple Watch that makes a meaningful appearance. The only thing I've grown used to since 2015 is having notifications on my wrist, but I get that on the Garmin. And as nice as that Apple ecosystem stuff is, I haven't missed the ability to unlock my Mac with my watch or well, any of the other stuff enough to go back to the Apple Watch. But as you know, I'm an Apple Watch Ultra user and there's a much bigger problem with that device, which has become more and more apparent the more I use this. You see, if you believe everything Apple shows you and tells you in their marketing material for the Apple Watch Ultra, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a proper Garmin competitor. It's not. That's a bit unfair, actually. It is built like a tank, and it does have features in terms of the build quality that I would never, ever push, but it's still not a Garmin. The biggest problem with the Apple Watch Ultra, and sorry to keep harping on about it, but this relates to their marketing for it, is the battery. If you want to do multi-day intense activities and track them for the entire period, you're going to have to charge your Apple Watch Ultra halfway through. Once again, you don't have to do that with the Garmin, which means it's much more convenient, easier to live with, and doesn't get in the way. And that begs the question, could I switch to the Garmin full time? No, and that's not because I don't want to, it's because people know me for my Apple content. I am an Apple Watch owner and an Apple Watch reviewer, so I do have to return to that smartwatch at some stage. The Garmin is still a little bit too much for me. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't understand 98% of the stuff that it tells me about my workouts, and I don't really care. And it's for that reason that I'm far more likely to become a two watch kind of guy. Okay, I'm back at Leicester Square and 11 miles later, I have 15 days of battery left. So it's used three days worth of battery for that entire hike. And I used the tracking for all of that distance. I used the GPS, I used the GPX route that I loaded into this watch, which worked brilliantly. And I still won't need to charge this watch for over two weeks. So hats off to the Garmin crowd. 
you're right. And if you want to see how the Apple Watch Ultra fared back in February when I took it to the Lake District, keep watching for a link.